What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I'm going to show you how I get seeds started indoors using grow lights and I'm going to be showing you how I'm sowing vegetables, herbs, and even some coleus and let you know what seeds you can get started now even if it's still cold where you live. So stick around. So to get started with seeds indoors, the first thing that you're going to need is a good seed starting mix. I did not have any pre-made seed starting mix on hand, so I'm going to show you how I amend my usual potting mix, which is Green Tree Pro Mix. It's a peat and cocoa blend, and um, there's perlite added into it. Generally not enough for me when I'm using this for house plants, I will add perlite in. But in this case, I'm going to add in vermiculite. And what vermiculite does is retain moisture. Um, you'll find that in some of your potting mixes as well, um, especially for outdoor potting mixes. It's really good for things that dry out quickly. So generally not something I use on my indoor plants, but it's excellent for seed starting. So just a little trick for you if you don't happen to have any seed starting mix. All right, so what we're doing here is I'm making about a two to one mix of vermiculite and my usual potting soil. I'm not going to add any extra perlite like I normally would, like I said, for my houseplants. Just going to add in that vermiculite. And if you want, you can even put a little bit of worm castings in here, and that will give your seedlings some food when they do sprout and they do start to need that nutrition. You know, they, they come with that nutrient packet inside of the seed, um, but once that is depleted, you will need to feed your plants. Um, this just kind of skips a step. But, you know, some people might not like having no control over the initial first feeding of their seedlings. So just a little caveat, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to mix that up really well. And I'm also going to pre-moisten my potting mix. This is super important. You don't want to fill your seed trays up with a dry mix and then try to water them after. It'll just spill everywhere. You'll get your seeds mixed up between cells. Um, trust me, I have tried every way to get out of this additional step, but you really need to do it. And it's best to let the seed mix sit for 10, 15 minutes just so everything can soak in nice and evenly. You should be able to crumple it and have it sort of stay together, but also easily fall apart, if that makes any sense at all. So here are these seed trays that I'm going to be using. I believe these are 72 count seed trays. They fit a ton of like little plants in there and then you've got the reservoir in the bottom. Um, I do recommend bottom watering your seedlings but you know we'll get to that eventually. So I'm going to pack in a bunch of dirt and I'm just going to give each cell one little finger pack. You just push it in and then you're going to add some soil on the top and pat it down and I'm going to do that for all of these cells. So the very first seeds we are dropping for 2020 are going to be chives. I love chives and chives are a biennial, which means they'll go to seed in the second year. And um, that means that they will flower the second year. So the ones I planted last year will flower for me this year. I'm super excited. I hope anyway, and uh, these guys won't, but they will be delicious in the meantime. So they take a while to establish. They're very good to start early on and you will notice the seeds are very small. A good rule of thumb with seeds is to check the back of the package for all of the information you would need on planting each individual kind of vegetable or flower or whatever. Um, but a good rule of thumb to use is just the size of the seed a lot of times will dictate how far down you should bury them. So with these chive seeds, I'm basically just surface sowing these. I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of dirt on the top afterwards and I'm not gonna worry too much about how many are in each cell um, you know they come up as an individual little spike that looks almost like a blade of grass so it really doesn't matter if these are clustered together so you kind of use that judgment with each seed and you can look up online what the seedlings will look like too if you need some help like deciding whether a seedling will be big whether you need to space things out there's tons of info online so definitely do a little research and just give it a shot because the worst thing that can happen is they don't germinate, which is a plus to starting things a little early. You can experiment. I am also going to be starting one of my favorite houseplants, which is also an outdoor annual or, you know, if you want to 
watch my coleus video and learn how to overwinter them, you can have them all the time. Uh, so I'm gonna try this little mixed pack of coleus. I just picked this up at a hardware store. Um, again, these seeds are very, very small. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the chives. And by the time these are able to move out after the last frost has passed, they will be nice and bushy and I can stick them in my planters and my shade areas to add some color out there in the garden, you know, before I have all my flowers and everything come summer. I also finished up my winter sewing this same day. So if you are curious what winter sewing is, why you'd want to do it, what I'm doing with a milk jug, and you didn't see that video, I will link it for you guys down below or up in the eye or both. Depends on what I remember. Basically the gist is these little jugs act as mini greenhouses and you can use this to sprout seeds that require winter stratification, which means they need a long period of cold and moisture before they will sprout. And that goes for most native perennials and um, you know, a lot of flowers. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can check out the video for more info. So we'll get on to the second seed tray that I started sowing um, about mid February. Tray number two's got some brassicas, arugula, we've got rosemary and lavender, which both need some time cold. You can pop them in the fridge for a couple of weeks, that works too. I've got cilantro in there, just things that take a little while to sprout. So I got those started in the middle of February in between homeschooling classes. So depending on how many seeds end up sprouting per cell, you're gonna to wanna to thin some of these out. A lot of things need to be thinned down to one seed. Not everything, again, you know, you're gonna to wanna to research each thing that you're growing just because you wanna know some stuff and also um, just to minimize the mistakes that you may make. So as you can see, there's a cluster over here and that is my coleus. I don't mind if that grows in a cluster. Same with like oregano and thyme. But when it comes to my heads of lettuce and flowers, things like that, um, a lot of those need to be thinned to one seedling. So here is a little peek at the uh, barely held together system I've got going on here for seed starting. You will recognize one of my hidden harvest panels. I snatched that from my Monstera so I could start some seeds with it. Um, I love this larger dome for the seed tray. It has these little air vents on the side and I've noticed this has done amazing at keeping that green algae that can form on the top of your seedlings at bay. So I'm definitely going to only use those going forward, I think, especially when I'm using the LED lights, which I can back off the seedlings a little bit more than I can with the fluorescent light, which I will show you momentarily. But this is my flower tray. I have um, a bunch of annual flowers in here. Uh, the Elysium is the one that you're seeing pop up a lot. And um, I just have a few things in there, miscellaneous things. I think there's some catnip in there as well. Um, but you can see little seeds starting to pop up everywhere. And this is about a week after I planted that second tray, so pretty exciting. This is my favorite part about starting seeds is it's like you have something fun to wake up to every day. So here is the T5 light that I picked up last year and you can see how much closer this is to the seedlings. That is about how far you want them from your seedlings when they're first sprouting, just a few inches above. Um, it feels wrong, but you gotta trust me. So these are the um, first two trays I think that I did. Yes, I did these two first, and then the flower one was the third, which I don't think is what I said a minute ago, but you know what? I, um, I'm done redoing this. And then you can see I also have my baby cactus over here that I talked about in a video that I will link below if you haven't seen it on starting cacti from seed, which I think is really fun. And I've got some peperomia propagations right there in some hummus pots that are going really well. And you can see my little crappy fan just giving the seedlings a little workout. And you can do that to help harden them up so that when they go outside, the wind isn't going to just knock them over. So this video was taken on February 22nd. This is three weeks of growth on that first tray that I showed you. So the chives, the coleus, you'll see, um, I believe that's thyme, yes, thyme, kale, and lettuce. So these are all things you can start very early on and you'll see the empty spot where my parsley is not coming up. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that. 
Actually, feel free to tell you, girl, why her parsley ain't sprouting. Um, I've tried it in cooler temperatures and warmer. It's very annoying. So here is a slightly further update. This was a couple weeks after that clip. So you can see everything is just getting bigger. And I have since split up those coleus. And here is the most recent tray that I planted, which is mostly hot peppers and flowers. So you can see everything is coming up beautifully. And I need to thin these out, which just means that you're going to make a decision and you're going to pluck out any extra plants and leave what you think is the strongest and best looking plant. You can kind of plant one seed per hole per cell if you want, but this is just a good way to guarantee that every cell will end up with a plant in it and you won't be wasting any space, which when you're a maniac like me is very important because I had to start a lot of stuff. So if you're curious, you want to leave your lights on between 12 and 16 hours a day. Um, I use timers generally when I'm using my houseplant lights. And however, I've just, I have not gotten around to doing it for these. So I'm literally turning them on in the morning when I get up at seven and around 10 PM before I go to bed, I'm just turning the lights off. So I'm also checking my seedlings twice a day to make sure things haven't dried out. Nothing's keeling over. And as you can see so far, everything is looking pretty good. These are actually under my new hidden harvest light, which I will tell you more about in a video coming up very soon. We're going to do a little giveaway um, for the other model of lights that I've showed you before. So pretty excited to show you guys about that. These, these are the lights I'm talking about that we're giving away. Anyway, so this is a little update on my coleus. I shot this today, which is March 9th, and you can see how much bigger they've gotten. You can see all the different kinds of colors that are coming in and some of my other seedlings there. So this is very exciting. I'm having a really good time growing these from seed. Highly recommended, uh, very easy. And I'm also starting to harden off my earlier planted seedlings. So that just means that I'm taking them outside for increasingly long periods of time to get them acclimated on nice sunny days. So you don't wanna blast them with too much sun. I started off in the shade and I have this little cheap greenhouse, which unfortunately ripped um, to help me out with that. And you can see I have sweet peas planted in old coffee cups. So don't be afraid to upcycle. So if you want to see where all these little baby plants end up, please stick around. I'm going to be showing you guys how I turn a totally empty lot of a yard into a hopefully beautiful and thriving garden. So stick around. I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you all in the next one.